In this week, we will study cross-validation. Cross-validation is very important task for machine learning process. In machine learning, the most important metric is test error. We want to minimize the test error from training data, not training error. This is very important. Although the training error is very small, if your test error is high, then the algorithm is very bad. So recall that we already discussed the, the loss graph, error or loss graph, according to the number of parameters or uh, complexity or flexibility or some other metrics that represent the you know, capacity of your algorithm. Essentially, the training error always decreases because you have more degree of freedom to control your algorithm. But your test error has some kind of U-shape because of overfitting issue. Basically, when you have too many parameters, uh, which just memorize the, your training data point, so it looks like very nice for your training data point, but in reality, when you really uh, implement the trend algorithm and you uh, make some inference for new coming data, you will observe very bad error because of this overfitting issue. So it is very important to understand the test error, but in reality, we cannot compute the test error. So this is the problem. Test error is very important, but we cannot compute the test error. So to resolve this issue, many machine learning process have cross-validation step. What is the cross-validation step? We split our entire data set into two different parts. One is training data and one is validation data or test data. And then train your algorithm or train your model only with the training data point. And then for the trained data, uh, for the trained model, you use test data to estimate your test error for your trained model. Okay? So for instance, if you want to decide which one we have to use among LDA or QDA, you train your LDA model with the training data point, this training data point, and then compute the test error using this independent test data. And then write down the test error for the LDA algorithm. QDA, we learn the same process. First, train your QDA parameters and then test your trained QDA model using independent test data and then write down the test error. We can compare now the test errors of LDA and QDA. So we can basically pick the best one among LDA and QDA from the estimated test error. Okay, so in this process, the most important thing is we have to use independent training data and test data. So independent means there is no overlap between training data and test data. Okay, why why we have to use independent data? So let's imagine there is a data set. So this is data set, and let's say so each 
this column of this matrix represent uh, 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 each individual data point. And let's imagine you split your entire data set into, into two different parts. One is training data and one is test data with some overlap. So there is some overlap between training and test data. Okay, then what will happen? Essentially, in this case, when you train your model, you already observe this part, which means you can fit your input and output pair very well throughout the training process. When the number of parameters is very high, even you can remember what is the pair between input and output from the training process. Then for the test process, when you estimate the test error using the test data point, this part already trained very well, even memorized the input and output pair. So from this part, the error will be very small, very tiny error. Essentially, this phenomena will make some um, the lower bias, so which makes some kind of um, underestimate your test error. So entirely, this will underestimate your test error, and this uh, underestimation will become much severe as you use more parameters. So when you compare LDA QDA, QDA will have some benefit compared to LDA. So you, uh, you will be more likely to choose QDA instead of LDA. Although in reality, LDA is better than QDA because QDA uses more parameters, so it has more benefit from the overlap area. Okay. So for the cross validation, the most important policy is we have to use uh, independent training and test data set without any overlap. This is the most important part. Okay. And also, uh, the second very uh, important decision is how to split the uh, training and test. So among entire data set, the most naive algorithm is just cut the, the half point. Just cut the middle point and reuse this is training, this is test data. That, that is fine, uh, but uh, what is the problem is, the first thing is uh, when our initial ordering of our uh, training data point or our entire data point has some some skew or some bias in the ordering. So let's say there is some um, more plus one point, there are more minus one data point. Then then this is introduced. This will introduce some unnecessary bias to your training process and also unnecessary bias to your test error estimation process as well. This is not good. So <clears throat> we can introduce some uh, randomization algorithm to overcome this issue. So simply we can shuffle your entire data point before splitting your training and data uh, test data point. Okay, just shuffle so that uh, with high priority uh, the training and test data point follow almost almost same distribution. When both data sets share the same distribution, you can uh, very well estimate the test error. Okay, this is uh, one another very important thing when you design cross validation scheme.